Hello, welcome to Beth Roars, where we look at your favourite singers to find out what makes them them. This one is a patron vote winner, yay! I don't know much about Jethro Tull, I've done a bit of research, I know there's a flute that's gonna happen, that makes me really happy. My God. This is actually the beginning. Atmosphere. So this is Ian Anderson, who is a singer and multi-instrumentalist. People, what have you done? Locked him in his golden cage. Golden cage. So interesting. His vowels are so wide. E he's changing everything to an e it's like the opposite of what a lot of people would do or often what i would suggest and for most people being that white causes a lot of tension however this is lower in his range and it is allowing him to get a punchier more direct sound there's something that sounds i mean jeff rotel from my research combine a lot of genres whether it's jazz and later on things like folk and metally early metal sort of sounds however here it sounds almost like english folk it's interesting as well because he's from scotland but moved to blackpool um when he was young <laughs> Actually, it's sorry I'm stopping so much. I will listen properly in a second. But it is also something that Maynard from Tool does makes everything quite wide and and direct. It, again, this is like a, the early sort of touching on some grunge. It's got that sound, technical term. Making it more Anna. You are the god of everything. A sense is inside you and me. It's so interesting. There's so many elements going on here. So lean upon him gently. He really again. And don't call on him to save What? Oh my goodness, he just turned from like a 70s folk singer into like, okay, this is rock. And I was like... Holy moly, I have got a feeling this is going to go to some crazy places. And what is really interesting, I wanted to stop and talk about the fact that he's a multi-instrumentalist in things like the, let me see if I say this correctly, the bazooki, which is a Greek stringed instrument, or the balalaika, I think is how you say it, and I think that's a Russian instrument. So he uses influences from lots of different music around the world, but also from from lots of different genres. I love how he's going through way around these vowels. Oh 
my goodness. This is so much better than Anchorman. This is fantastic. Okay, so I am a little bit of a woodwind player. I learned flute for a show, and what's interesting is at some points he's overblowing the flute, he's slurring into it, and this is interesting because it's kind of the opposite of what you're taught. The same as how he is singing. He is not going with the correct way. He is doing his own version so much so that his daughter learned flute, and when he first started, he she came along and was like you're doing all the fingering incorrectly you're playing it incorrectly and he relearned some of the correct ways but when he initially started he just picked up at that time a wooden flute and then just gave it a go and that gave him a unique sound <gasps> I'm sorry. That was my response. This is so interesting. I Just watch this. I want to talk about it in a second. Okay, we'll get on to this. That technique, there are people who do beatbox flute, which is vocalizing and playing the flute at the same time. Look at it on YouTube. There's so many amazing people. Because voice, to create voice, the air has to still travel through the vocal cords, so it is possible to sing and play flute at the same time. And if you have, if you're mic'd really, really close, now you have to get a certain amount of breath through to create a sound on a flute. So often breathier tones are easier to create that sound but that's why he's kind of using his voiced sound as um, the beats the percussion in between and then ah, these really kind of noisy breaths to make the flute sound it's really really interesting and now he's kind of using um, the tapping of the keys as the percussion <laughs> I mean, he's like a forefather of beatbox flute. I wish I knew more about flute. Oh my goodness. Oh. It's interesting because she creates this kind of two tone thing with the flute and his voice. Like harmonizing with his flute. Oh 
Man, this is the coolest thing. I'd love to go see him live. He's just embracing these silly sounds. Ah, bah. He just doesn't care. It's all about expression. And he is obviously just enjoying the music. And I think for most of us, there's so much to be learned from that because when we play music, we get so fussy about perfection. And actually, the things that are the most electrifying and brilliant to watch are often just when people are just letting go and being free with the sounds that they are making. There's no technique, it's just like, ah, having fun, that's the technique here. And I think he's got just naturally great pitch as well. physicality as well so much freedom the dynamics in this are incredible He's literally putting a little p on the start of that. To go. Here he goes again. Ugh. It's interesting that he's using breath as a musical tool. I talked about this before. I actually haven't talked about it for a long time about how breath adds to the emotion but here he's not even using it as an emotional tool he's more using it as an instrument <laughs> sounds weird by itself but with a close-up mic you can use the way that you breathe to be a percussive instrument and that's kind of interesting <laughs> And look, he's having comedy. It's comedy, it's fun. He's not taking it too seriously. <laughs> oh, that whimsical <laughs> at the end. Fantastic. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Ah. <laughs> oh, that's gonna make my day. I'm about to start a long teaching shift and this has definitely put me on a good foot for lessons. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please do like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye.